Okay, so let's start with the router. At the moment on the router, no IP addresses are configured. So the first thing we need to do is go on to the Gigabit 000 interface and no shut it. And then we need to create sub interfaces. So notice I'm going to choose dot one as the sub interface for VLAN one. I'm going to specify an encapsulation of dot one Q using VLAN one as the native VLAN. The management of VLAN is typically your untagged VLAN, which by default is VLAN one. I can now configure the IP address of the router. The last IP address in subnet 10.1.1.0/24 is 10.1.1.254. So do show run shows us the configuration of the first subinterface. We now need to configure the second subinterface which is VLAN 10. You don't have to use the same numbers as the VLAN number. That just makes it easier. So I'm going to specify VLAN 10. This is not the native VLAN. IP address is 10.1.10.254. So again, show run. There's the configuration of VLAN 10. And then I need to create a third sub interface for VLAN 20. Encapsulation is going to be dot one Q VLAN 20. IP address is going to be 10.1.20.254 slash 24. So again, there's the configuration of the physical interface, a VLAN 1 sub interface, a VLAN 10 sub interface, a VLAN 20 sub interface. The next thing we need to do is configure the switch. So on the switch, show IP interface brief. No IP addresses are configured. VLAN 1 is administratively down at the moment. So conf t, interface of VLAN 1, no shut. IP address 10.1.1.253 slash 24. We've been told to only configure an IP address in VLAN 1. So let's confirm that the switch can ping the router. It can, but that's not entirely correct yet. We still need to configure this interface as a trunk port. VLAN 1 will work because it's the native VLAN, but other VLANs will not work. So switch port mode trunk. We need to specify an encapsulation. So switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. And now we can make the port a trunk port. So those two commands are required. Interface went down. It's now come up again. So show run. They are the two commands on gigabit 101. Can we still ping the router? At the moment, it's not working, but now it is. It just took it a while. So notice the pings have now succeeded. Packet tracer is showing green on the link. So that looks good. We now need to configure VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and we need to put our PCs into those VLANs. So our two PCs are connected to ports 102 and 103. So interface gigabit 102, switch port mode access, switch port access of VLAN 10 in this case. Interface gigabit 103, switch port mode access, because it's a PC, switch port access of VLAN 20. So show run. What have we configured? Gigabit 101 is a trunk port. Gigabit 102 and 103 are access ports. 102 is in VLAN 10, 103 is in VLAN 20.
So we can use commands such as show interface gigabit 101 switch port to verify the configuration of an interface. So this command shows us that gigabit 101 is configured as a trunk port and is operating as a trunk port. The encapsulation used is dot one q access of VLAN is VLAN one. If we look at interface gigabit 102, this port is an access port in VLAN 10. Look at 103, this port is an access port in VLAN 20. So that looks good. We've configured the VLANs on the switch. We've configured the link between the rod and the switch. Now we need to confirm that the PCs can ping each other. So on PC1, we've been told to configure the PC with a static IP address. The default gateway will be the router on the PC. So I'll set both the default gateway and DNS to the router. The IP address will be 10.1.10.1. .10 subnet mask is gonna be a slash 24 subnet mask. So on the command prompt, IP config, we can see the configuration of the PC. That's correct per our instructions. Default gateway is wrong. I should make that 10. Always good to verify. So do that again. That looks better. Can we ping the default gateway? Yes, we can. So that's good. Do something similar on PC2. Default gateway will be 10.1.20.254. DNS server will be 10.1.2254. IP address of the PC will be 10.1.20.2. Subnet mask will be a slash 24 subnet mask. Open up a command prompt, IP config. That looks good. Can we ping? the router yes we can can we ping pc1 so ping 10.1.10.1 yes we can so pc2 is able to ping pc1 and can pc1 ping pc2 yes it can so we've successfully configured this network with vlans and inter vlan routing using a router on a stick so now let's do the extra work for credits. How do we get everyone to talk to everyone? So on the switch, we need to configure an IP default gateway pointing to the router in the same subnet as the switch. So ping 10.1.1.254, that works. Can the switch ping the first PC, at the moment it looks like it can't. Can it ping the second PC? At the moment it looks like it can't. When you use IP default gateway, you need to ensure that routing is disabled. In this example, routing is enabled. So we're gonna say no IP routing because this is a layer two switch and not a layer three switch and that should allow us to ping the PCs, which it does. So this is the lesson. If you have IP routing enabled, you don't use the default gateway command. So as soon as I enable IP routing on the switch, the IP default gateway command is ignored by the switch and the switch can't ping the PCs. Now, typically on switches, the default behavior is to have IP routing disabled. So this is the default behavior. In this lab, however, it was turned on. So we need to verify that it's off so that we can ping the PCs using the IP default gateway command. So can PC1 ping the switch? Ping 10.1.1.253. Yes, it can. Can PC2 ping the switch? 
Yes, it can. So we successfully configured this network per our instructions. Don't forget to save your configurations on your devices. In the exam, you may have to use the command copy running config startup config. Here I'm simply using the old command WR. But I would suggest in the exam that when you finished, save your configurations. I hope you found this video useful. Mm -hmm.